Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is the Bible Reloaded. And we have huge things happening right now. Uh, we are actually filing a lawsuit to uh, the Cristiano Films Group and 5 and 2 Pictures uh, because uh, in the past... Obviously, you're aware if you're a fan of this show. If you're if you're not, this is new information to you. They have DMCA'd us in the past. Yes. Uh, all the time, it's been false. Uh, we have beat them, I don't know how many times, two or three times at this point. And uh, we have had really, really bad interaction with them in the past. However, through a series of emails and long discussions and just uh, like three weeks of bullshit... Uh, Hugo and I finally had broken out of the their uh, last DMCA, which was on our review of Matter of Faith. Uh, and, and Hugo, you were the one that had the primary kind of talk with them. Why don't you tell us about that real quick? Basically what happened was we did our review of a Matter of Faith, and about a week or two later we got a DMCA notice. This is pretty common if you are a reviewer on YouTube, or anyone on YouTube, if you use any clips or even talk about anyone else's material at some point, Chances are you've come across the DMCA. And what that is, is they send a legal notice to YouTube that tells them that copyrighted material is in the video and it needs to be taken down. Now, this is valid if you, for instance, uploaded a whole movie or large portions of a movie. However, there is part of copyright law called fair use. You've probably heard of this through various videos on YouTube, like people like Doug Walker have done the campaigns Where's the Fair Use, uh, in which... For criticism or satire or comedy, stuff like that, as long as you're using the material in a limited way, you're allowed to use copyrighted material without the authorized consent of the copyright holder, as long as you use it properly. Now, we pride ourselves on, in our videos, especially talking about the Cristiano Brothers movies, we definitely fall in line under fair use. Normally this isn't a problem for us, it's usually an automated system, we bounce back a DMCA to the people who sent it, via their bot, usually, and it gets taken care of. In the case of Five and Two Pictures, however, we actually got a real person. This person will go unnamed, but I had long, long conversations over the course of a few days with them of them trying to ignore me, but I continued to come back with the defense of fair use. However, uh, instead, they continued to be belligerent. I did, however, get in contact with Dave, who is the head of Five and Two Pictures, or the Cristiano Films Group, and uh, I explained fair use to him as well. Eventually, we came to an understanding, albeit begrudgingly, on the behalf of the person I talk to most of the time. Again, who will remain nameless, though we have come to call him the pirate guy for reasons we will maybe explain in the future. Anyway, so, basically, what happened was, months go by, maybe, it's been like two months at best, uh, and Hugo and I are sitting down to record one of our many videos, and... I get an email, uh, and it gets sent straight to my phone for the business email, and I read it uh, right before we're about to begin, and I start laughing. Like, a lot. And Hugo is a little upset at me, because we're supposed to be working. Uh, he's very professional, uh, when the hot microphone is sitting in front of him. But, uh, so I read the email to him, and it turns out that YouTube sent me an email, uh, letting us know that 5 and 2 Pictures, Cristiano Film Group, has sent five DMCA notices to our channel. However, in that in that email, even YouTube, yes, even YouTube, under their new system, said, hey, we're pretty sure you fall under fair use. We're just letting you know this happened. Yeah. So here's the thing. We have the list of all five of those DMCAs. The first three are movie reviews that we did. You go tell the people what the movie reviews are. We did uh, Crime of the Age, which several which other people... Which is terrible. Have, yeah, several... Terrible. Several other people have also done that, including Brad Jones, the cinema snob. Uh, End of Harvest, which is another one starring also, the... Hey, also terrible. Yeah, Hey Scotty Jesus Man guy. And uh, Time Changer. Now, Very bad. All of these movies, we didn't use clips from the movies. Instead, we used stills. Now, why did we do right. this? Because in our discussions with Dave from 5 and 2 Pictures, he was actually a very nice guy. His employee was belligerent and very mean to us. However, Dave seemed like a nice guy who probably just had a bad employee. So, I agreed to Dave, and in fact, the employee in the future will just use still images. Because, whatever, if it makes you feel better. Although, legally, under fair use, we can use short clips. This was us being nice. Which apparently right. was a bad decision. 
this was us basically extending uh, an olive branch. We're, we're, we're trying to make amends because this is our job. This is their job. We kind of, we're all in a similar peer group um, in this media creation business. And we're just like, you know what? Fuck it. Your videos aren't that visually interesting anyways. We'll just, you know, we can review the movie with clips. It's fine. So we did that. So we got DMCA'd on all of those. Uh, just, by the way, still images, and in uh, Crime of the Age, we used uh, some some audio, but not a lot. And that was because we needed to explain how poor the acting was. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so it was uh, for review purposes. Anyways, so the other two DMCAs, because remember, there are five, not three. In the other two, the pirate guy, the employee that represents the Cristiano Film Group... DMCA two videos in which we are discussing the prior DMCA. We used zero. You can't. It's DMCA exception. You cannot DMCA <laughs> someone. We didn't use any footage from anything in those. We weren't even really talking about the movies. We were talking about their terrible DMCA policies. Now, <laughs> here's what Pirate Guy was trying to do, and I don't know if his employers knew what he was doing or he went lone wolf on this one. But at this point, it doesn't really matter because he was under their employ and he was acting on their behalf. Now, what I think happened was he was stewing for a couple of months, still mad at us, and mad at me in specific because I stopped him from doing what he does all the time. If you don't know, they have a reputation on YouTube for if you review any of their stuff negatively, they will DMCA you to take it down. Not just us. I have gotten dozens of messages on various social medias by much smaller YouTubers. We're talking a thousand subscribers, under a thousand, maybe like five thousand that did movie reviews of this, that got DMCA'd, and their channel's crippled because they don't have a big enough following to really make a lot of noise. Right. I assume I and Jake, by extension, were the first people to step in and say, hey, no, this isn't cool, we're big enough, we're not going to put up with your bullying. Now, they seemed very surprised that anyone stood up against them. The guy didn't even know how to undo the DMCA the first time around. Yeah, I had to... That's how few people get to fight him. Like Brad, by the way, from from, uh, the Cinema Snob... He actually just took down the the video he had done of their movie and just capitulated and was just like, you know what, I'm out. And I don't blame him because that guy was fucking hard to deal with. Yeah. But Hugo, the little trooper that he is, pulled himself up by his bootstraps and kicked Pirate Guy right in the junk. Yeah. So I assume what happened was a couple months went by, we reviewed a couple more of their movies, as we said, in stills, those are the ones they recently DMCA'd. He probably got wind of this at some point in his searches over the internet, got mad because we were still criticizing them, and then attempted to find five videos he could maybe argue were DMCA-able. We've only done three of their movies since then, though. He couldn't redo A Matter of Faith because we've already gotten that removed, so he found three, and presumably he tried to find two others that were as close as possible to the criteria. <laughs> And what he found was us talking about him being a jerk with the DMCAs. Now, on these, by the way, you have to fill out the DMCA form saying what copyrighted material is in the video you want to take down and how much of it appears in. Here's a screenshot, by the way. These two videos, again, are the ones that have no copyrighted material. Not talking about the movies. The first one, they say... Uh, the title of the original video was Second Glance, which is the Hey Scotty Jesus Man video. We've never done that movie. Never done ever. that movie. And it says, where does the content appear? Entire video implying that we just uploaded the video, even though that video is, what, 10, maybe 20 minutes long, something like that. Uh, and then the second one was <laughs> A Matter of Faith. That wasn't the Matter of Faith review, though. It was yet another one in which we were explaining the how wrong they are in their DMCA system is. Now... Five DMCAs at once. If YouTube had accepted those, do you know where our, our channel would be right now? In the ether, gone. Yeah. Okay, so, and also, by the way, he knows that the DMCA values changed because it it is now four strikes on your channel, and then you're gone. It's no longer the two at, Three. at a time because YouTube had changed their, uh, their system. So he went the extra mile and chose to DMCA us five times at once to try to silence us. This is obvious targeted abuse and harassment and i'm not kidding this falls under legal harassment and also perjury by the way filing a false dmca claim is federally recognized perjury that's not okay and you did that five times pirate guy so here's what's happening because of that we Got into contact with uh, FUPA, the Fair Use Protection Account, which is uh, the the account spearheaded by H3H3 Productions here on YouTube. I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that, uh, Ethan. 
in, in their fight against copyright, which is still ongoing. Uh, from there, we actually got a hold of one of the two main lawyers for that. Now, we're not going directly through FUPA at this time because they're just swamped, but we are going through Michael Lee, who was one of the two main lawyers for that account. And he, so we got on a hangout with him after Hugo had emailed him back and forth a little bit. And we're like, hey, what do we do? He looked at the case and goes, oh, buddy, you, you're going to jump all over this. This is ridiculous. And he literally said, this is the worst abuse he's ever seen as far as DMCA is concerned. The worst that he has seen. And he deals with this all the time. And then he said, we can't do it through FUPA right now, but what we can do is we can set up a, uh, a fundraiser for you, and I'll give you numbers, and I'll give you an estimate, and, and we'll, we'll work it out. And here are the numbers he got. It's $5,000 to start. Uh, this gets us a lawyer on retainer, and then they can begin the process of getting the suit served, negotiations, and other preliminary things we need uh, to, to get the case going. Basically, all the paperwork and the legal mumbo-jumbo. Um, we need this as soon as possible. This is the number one priority right now. Uh, the second one is about $50,000, which I know sounds like a lot, but this is halfway. Uh, this is the halfway point for roughly anything we could possibly need as this case progresses, uh, especially because copyright cases like this are actually more complicated than they seem. They're not like, um, you know, like a drug case where there's a guaranteed sentence for any sort of thing that falls under uh, a specific law. Uh, these are all subjective. 